Sisters and brothers, away to see me, Pastor Melo speaking. In the name of Tatanzambi Amazulu, the one who anointed me to be your servant and to get you prepared to go back to Zion, Congo Dianto Telalu, Kuvamu, peace be with you. Today is January 25, 2021, and we are making our 45th video. The theme is Simon Kimbangu, Elijah has come already. Matthew 17, 11. June 19, 21, village of Mkamba, southern Belgian Congo. A huge crowd is gathered around a distant silhouette. The multitude is in turmoil as they witness miracles never seen before. The figure seen from afar is Simon Kimbangu. Since April, he has performed the same miracles that Christ did 2,000 years ago in Palestine. The crippled walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, and Simon Kimbangu raises the dead. Suddenly, two vociferating and shouting characters cut through the crowd. These are two Belgian Catholic priests with full beards tucked into the cassettes they have formed on their lips. Having reached where the prophet is standing, they turn to the crowd and say, Don't listen to these men! They point an accusing finger at Simon Kimbang. He is a false prophet. He is demon-possessed. He is lying to you. He is cheating on you. A blanket of silence descends on the crowd. You could hear a fly flying. Simon Kimbangu's baritone voice then rises. Carried by the wind, all he him protest. False prophet me, this is what we will see. It is the most high Tatanzambi Mazulu who will decide. There are seven lifeless bodies here at my feet brought by the families in the hope that they will live again. Turning to Catholic priests, Simon Kimbangu challenges them. Resurrect them then, and this crowd will know that you are truly men of God. The priests then approach the corpses. They extend their hand and they begin to pray earnestly. Lord, you who sent us to enlighten these primitive people, do not make us ashamed in front of these men who lead them astray. Let these corpses rise again. However, no matter how much the priests pour out in prayers, pray with their eyes closed, pray with their eyes open, raise their hands to heaven, nothing helps. No quiver of light, no breath comes to animate the corpses. After a quarter of an hour of this exercise, the priests, sweating profusely with a scarlet complexion, give up. The crowd, indignant, scolds them. Simon Kimbangu's turn. He looks up to the heaven and lifts his hands. In the name of Tatanzambi Yamazulu, the one who anointed me to be his messenger, corpses stand up. The lifeless bodies come to life and move. They cough one after the other. They are resuscitated before the eyes of the martyr. The latter, at the height of joy, sings the praises of Tatanzambi Yamazulu. They extol the name of the envoy of the Most High, Simon Kimbangu. They boo and scold the white priests who are retiring. They are humiliated to the highest point their complexions red with shame. They have rage in their hearts. They deeply hate the Congo prophet. Booze from the crowd chase them back to the vehicle. They start the engine and disappear. In April of this year, 2021, the first year of the emancipation of the Bantu diaspora, the year following 2020, the Jubilee, after 2019, which is the year of the end of the 400 years of slavery, the Democratic Republic of Congo will celebrate the centenary of the appearance of the greatest prophet who lived on earth after Kuswa of Nazareth. 
because of the color of his skin, because of where he appeared, no one made the connection between Simon Kimbangu and Bible prophecies. And yet, it was enough to make the link between the miracles operated by the Bantu prophet and the miracle of the apparitions of Fatima in Portugal for the veil to begin to tear little by little. 1917-1921 Barely four years separate the six apparitions of the Celestial Lady Revelation 12.1 in Fatima and the apparition of the prophet announced by Malachi 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. As often in the Bible, the name of the prophet is revealing. Simon is Nsemi, is the sower, the one who sows in the name of the Creator. Kimbangu is derived from Kimbangu and means testimony. The name of Kimbangu accurately matches the following passage. There was a man sent from God whose name was Kimbangu. By replacing John with Kimbangu, this biblical passage takes on a brighter, more enlightening glow. These men came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John 1, 6 to 7. These are exactly the words spoken by Simon Kimbang each time the question, Who are you? was asked him. He would say, I am the Tumwa, the envoy, the messenger. I am not Christ, I am the one who prepares the way of the Lord. To put an end to the enigma that Kimbangu constituted and continues to constitute, let's call once again the scriptures. Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already, and they didn't know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. Matthew 17, 11 to 12. In Kamba, the villager of miracles, Simon Kimbangu baptized a multitude of people, like John the Baptist. Thrown in prison after barely six months of ministry, he signed the letters addressed to his disciples, John the Baptist. Simon Kimbangu died in prison, like John the Baptist. The town where Simon Kimbangu spent 30 years of his life in custody was called Elizabethville, like the mother of John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1, 13. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Simon Kimbang was Elijah. He was John the Baptist. He prepared the way for Simon Togo, the unsung Messiah, announced at Fatima and appeared on the other side of the border in Angola. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Proverbs 25.1 Ingeta Pastor Mello